So on uh, on Sunday there, the uh, message that the pastor preached was um, from John 21. He had just turned over to the beginning of that, and uh, he made some jokes about it being the last, the last uh, passage. He promises, or the last chapter. Finally, going to get out of John. Kind of funny. Um, and then he asked, like, how long has it been? And you know, somewhere, ah, oh, three years, oh, four years. Oh, you were. You were in it when uh, when we joined, so uh, maybe four. And uh, I put up my hand and I said, "Well, you were preaching John four when Caleb was born, and he's five. <laughs> so it's it's been a long time. Uh, Sunday morning, I think he's been doing it. So and, and he'll probably take another." Like he read verses 1 through 14, but he only really preached 1 through 4, and 1 through 4 is going to be um, basically a grouping called On This Wise. <clears throat> and I think it's going to, um, I think he said, have six subsections to it, and we got to the first one. So John 21 could easily round out the rest of the year. Anyways, he, uh, you can read it, um, in your own time. But one thing that he, um, he talked about that he, he said that, you know, I've typically preached this this way. I've heard it teach scores of time this way. <clears throat> and it, and, uh, but I don't believe the same thing anymore. Now it's been interesting lately, you and I have noticed there's been a lot of things that have been cleared up in the ideas and thoughts of of Christians. I mean just whoa, we never saw it that way. It's not like some new thing is being being preached, but rather like a return to the old understanding. And uh, for years it's true. I've I've heard this preached as basically <clears throat> you know, Peter says, I I go fishing. And the disciples say, we go with thee. And um, the tone has always been set as this melancholy, like, well, nothing else to do now, so let's go fishing, boys. Or, you know, even like an angry, like, ah, I give up. Like, let's go fishing. Going back to uh, his old job, right? You know, and I'm sure that's how <clears throat> it's always been interpreted in my mind. But what I failed to do and what... What um, Pastor mentioned also is um, the context of verse 20. <clears throat> so these had all been together after their failures and blunders. They waited. They received the Holy Ghost as Christ breathed on them. Thomas shows up. They all go, oh, Thomas, you should have been here. Jesus was here. And he says, oh, except I put my, except I see him and put my finger in this, the print of his side, you know, I, I won't believe. And then, and then uh, he eats his words because he just sees Christ and he says, my Lord, my God. And that's, that's another thing that I, I just realized through the preaching last week was, was Thomas never even put his finger in his side. He just saw him because Jesus says, because thou sawest me, thou believest. Blessed are they that have not seen me and yet believe. So that. That's amazing. Well, well, except these two things happen, I won't believe. And then Jesus shows up and he's like, I believe, my Lord, my God. And that's one of the greatest statements of Jesus' deity in the whole of the, of the scriptures. Um, so now the, the last of the 11 is now full of the Holy Ghost, the Bible says. And so as we roll into chapter 21 do we expect that such a time has passed where they went from being full of the holy ghost encouraged having all seen christ they're excited they're 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 full of what the holy ghost puts in you love joy peace long suffering gentleness meekness faith temperance 
um, <clears throat> with no law now binding them, because there's nothing against the law of the fullness of the Holy Ghost. Um, no, no, no law that could be formed against the Holy Ghost. They, they now stand in complete Christian liberty. And we expect we turn the page and it's like, Woe is me. I'm going to go fishing. I'm so frustrated and dejected and just depressed and, and even angry. I'm going fishing. I, I think to the contrary, and uh, and the pastor proves this by grabbing a, a verse in um, Mark 16, 7. When, when, when I believe Jesus says he, that he's going into Galilee or the Lord goes into Galilee. So they'd all been waiting, expecting to receive the Holy Ghost. That happened. Thomas a little bit later, but he's full. Now there's this promise that you can grab from Mark 16, 7 of Jesus going into Galilee. And there we find these Galileans. Everyone says they're in hiding, but are they in hiding if they're... Um, basically hanging out where everybody knows their name they went back to their hometown they went back to where they worked their day job they went back to yes all of these things are true but not as dejected rejected depressed oh, I'm just gonna quit the ministry and go back to my day job Saints no they went back to, to where they were from went back to their hometown went back to what they knew Full of the Holy Ghost, and it, it's amazing now to think of that on on this wise, because these disciples aren't hiding as it was it seemed. These disciples now full of the Holy Ghost return to where this all began, where they were first called of Christ, and they're waiting for another coming of the Savior, expectedly hoping to see him in Galilee as he promised once again. Now, people will also say they remain scattered at this time, but you find there um, the same group that was gathered together when Jesus first started calling disciples are now assembled here by the shore. Because we have Thomas, the doubter, right? We like to call him. We have, we have uh, Peter, the denier. We have Nathaniel, the one whom Jesus said, there is no guile. Behold, a Galilean indeed, in whom there is no guile, and he called him. And then we have, I think if you would go back to the context of their first calling, uh, Philip and, and, and Andrew, uh, perhaps. But um, that can't be 100% guaranteed. But then also, James and John are there. So, all these are more united than ever. It said, oh, they're, they're, they're divided, they're scattered abroad, they're, they're, they're as sheep with no shepherd. No, the shepherd's in them. The Spirit of God now dwells in them in, in its fullness. And so when Peter stands up and says, I go fishing, they're like, we go with thee. Not because Peter's leading them into being backslidden, Peter's leading them into what he knows best. And this is the importance of waiting. When we're in a situation where the Lord has promised us something, or we have a hope of something coming to pass, the most important thing that we can do is what we know to do best. And so Peter just decides to simply go fishing. Was he defeated? Was he rejected? I don't know. Everyone says, oh, he came in with no fish. I was fishing all day and no fish. I mean, that though shows a great motivation and a determination and a, a love and passion for what he's doing. And you know this best as a fisherman. It's easy to stay motivated when it's just fish after fish after fish and you're excited and you're gathering lots. But the real challenge and the real <clears throat> unction and the real proof of your calling comes when you're fishing and catching nothing. These guys stuck it out through the whole night, doing what they knew best, following their natural leader, 
as it seems. Peter, not a denier here. He's Peter. He's that great disciple, leader of men. Thomas is no longer the doubter, my Lord, my God. If you look at the story, really, I don't even know if Thomas doubted any more than the others, so we should probably stop being so hard on him. Nathaniel, you hear nothing from him aside from his call, and now here standing, having not been removed from the calling. In his, his quiet consistency, there's no guile in Nathaniel. James and John, possibly the other two are Philip and Andrew. But he says, oh, I go fishing, and they follow after him. Again, they're not in hiding. They're waiting with anticipation for Jesus to come and to meet with them again, as he had he gave, gave promise in Mark chapter 16 and verse 7. So our practical here for John 21 and verse 1 through 4 <clears throat> is, is not just this, oh, so depressed and defeated. We had this great experience with the Lord, and now we're just oh, defeated and waiting for his next return. Think of it like a Sunday. You get up, you get excited, you get to church, you get going. You, you can't wait to meet with the Lord. It happens. Finally, you get a great experience with the Lord on Sunday, and oh, I'm going to see him again next Sunday, but oh, it's, it's work. I go fishing between here and there, and you know, we're all divided and we're all separated. We're all defeated. No. The practical here, the message that we can all take from it is go on and get involved in what you know best as you're waiting for the coming of your Lord again. Between church services, go get involved. Get busy in what you know to do. Peter says, I go a fishing. You might say, I go to, to be a mom and a dad. I, I, I go to wash windows. I, I, I go to, to, uh, to I go to clean houses. I go, I go to serve in, in, a, in a local manner. I go to obey my parents. What you know to do, you need to do. With all your might, the Lord commands us and commissions us to. These disciples were full of the Holy Ghost. On Sunday, you may get full of the Holy Ghost, and that will last. That is truly enough to Him dwelling in you to suffice getting you to the next time you see the Lord. Live on that promise. Wait for your Savior. But while you're waiting, get involved. Get excited. Get motivated to do what you know to do. And don't, don't withdraw yourself from the ministry that you're called to. Don't, don't stumble over deciding what's next. Maybe Sunday's mission message to you it was a little unclear as to what God was commanding you to do. Okay, that's fine. Next Sunday, he'll clarify it for you. In the meantime, wait for him to come. Be busy. Go fishing. Follow the disciples on this wise. Look, your position is like their position. You're in your hometown. Except now it's different. Now you're spirit-filled. Sunday has given you a great blessing. Walk in that blessing. Don't go in hiding. Don't, don't run away and, and hide yourself away and, until you, you can hope to see a glimpse of light of your Savior returning the following Sunday. No, get out there. Be where people know your name. Let them see your testimony. That was the position of these disciples. I'm not sure, but it seems like it had been since their calling, since they last tread these steps and stood in the place where they were fishing before. Perhaps they needed to dust off that old boat and that old net and do a great work and labor before they got back out and labored through the night. These men were diligent in doing what they knew best. You're doubting Thomas, now full of faith. You're denying Peter, now leading the charge of the other disciples. Nathaniel, on whom there is no guile, steady as he always was. The sons of thunder, James and John, ready to lean on Jesus' breast one moment and then say, let's call down fire and destroy these guys the next. 
just as, as as thunder follows the lightning with a with a crash and a boom and a bang suddenly these guys in a moment go from silence to rip roar and rage but you could always count on them to be following their lord philip and nathaniel perhaps were there walking back in the same path they had once trodden simply as fishermen but now all of them fishermen full of the Holy Ghost and the power that he gives. Not in hiding, but in holiness, walking with their God and going back to fishing, amen. Nothing wrong with that. You don't see Jesus rebuking them as these independent Baptists often do for going back to his old work. You don't see Jesus calling Peter backslidden for leading the disciples down a, a dark path of chasing after their old works. No. You see Jesus on the shore excited to see them. And offering a suggestion. Hey guys. Cast it in on the other side. <laughs> well, we've been fishing all night, but let's give it a shot, boys. One more time, cast it in on the other side, and they do and bring up great multitudes. Jesus showed up and worked in and through the mundane, the day job. Christ can work in your day job, moms and dads, as you care for the little ones. Dads, you work your jobs. Christ can show up in your mundane job as you're washing windows and scrubbing floors and serving people their meals. Christ can show up in your day job and make it abundantly more bountiful than you could ever ask or think. They labored all through the night and got nothing. I'm certain they would have went at it again the next day. Not discouraged, but simply understanding that, hey, sometimes you bring in some and sometimes you don't. And here the Lord says, hey, cast it in on the right side. And it's important that we understand and listen for the word of the Lord as we're doing our mundane, perhaps he's gonna ask, offer a suggestion. Hey, you're, you're doing it on the wrong side. How about you try the right side? And you do that and suddenly there's a great multitude in so much that your fruit is abounding. And you can't even bring it in, you need help. And the moment that Peter had this great multitude of fishes, he jumped ship as it were so excited about the promised return an opportunity to fellowship with his savior that he jumped ship he forgot about the job he forgot about the fish he got excited about the ministry again but the work wasn't gone it was still waiting there for him seems his friends took over as he for a moment jumped ship and then oh, 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 i have to get out back there and help them again <clears throat> but you can see then it's not like Peter went from zero to a hundred. Oh, I'm so depressed. Oh, we caught fishes. Now I can see the Lord working. Oh, there he is. Okay. Only in his fruitfulness. Now I think we saw in Peter an expectancy. And even as he was fishing, he was doing it with a, with a, with a hymn in his heart. Even as Paul and Silas in prison. What's worse than that? Sang praises unto God. Peter, now in his lack of fish and a whole night's labor i think he was singing a hymn i think he was rejoicing with his other spirit-filled brethren he was excited and then suddenly a small still voice enters into his heart and mind from the beach of course and he says cast it on the right side he does so and he brings in this great multitude of fishes and he says the Lord's here just as he said the Lord is here just as he said he came to my work he came to my job it's time for church again we need to remember that while we're waiting for God standing on his promises and looking at them afar off just get busy in what you know to do if it's ministry minister if it's leading, lead. If it's if it's serving, serve. If it's giving, give. We've all been given a measure of faith and we've all been given spiritual gifts whereby we can benefit the body of Christ. Use them to the best of your ability. Christ will meet you there. 
Christ will see you there. Christ will see your labor. And he'll be diligent to reward it. Even with physical blessings and spiritual nourishment as again, after the great and plentiful harvest here in this life, they sat down and as they had done so many times, they now remembered the Lord's death till he came and they broke bread and they fellowshiped and they partook of the, the wonderful fishes that they had caught and they rejoiced in the presence of God their Savior and they had fellowship one with another as, as is meet for the Christian. These disciples weren't dejected, rejected, and defeated. These disciples were expecting they'd see their Lord again. And until they did, they were going to stay busy with the things He had given them to do. And yes, it's not just pastors who are given things to do of the Lord. Moms, you are given children to take care of. Dads, you are given wives and houses to take care for. You're given the jobs where you can minister, the strength to gain wealth. We're all given these opportunities and high callings of God. The best thing though is, not only are we given all of these duties and tasks and things, but we are given the fullness of the Holy Ghost in them. Speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your hearts to the Lord, That'll help you. Being in His Word, the life that that gives, being in prayers and meditations, allowing God to discern the thoughts and intents of your heart, correcting what He's charged you to correct, asking Him to aid you in the areas where you're lacking, seeking the fullness of the Holy Ghost, and His presence, which is always available to you and to those that ask. That's been given us. And so, when you get filled up this Sunday or this next time you have opportunity of fellowship or the next great sermon you hear, or the next hymn that, that passes through your heart and mind and ears, when you get filled up with the Holy Ghost, it's not your opportunity to take that and to go back to your home and to hide away and to just wait for the next time. No, rather use it on this wise, same fashion as the apostles did. They went home, yeah, but they went home full of the holiness of the Holy Ghost. And there's so many things you can discuss when it comes to that. There's so many ideas that pop into our minds. We all came from some place. Maybe it's time we go home full of the Holy Ghost. We all have loved ones and family members that we've spent time with and, and uh, grown up beside. Maybe it's time we go home to them full of the Holy Ghost. We've had friends and family. We've we've had we've had jobs. We've had homes. We've had we've had all sorts of things in our past. Sometimes it's not best to just leave those things aside, maybe for a time. But would to God we would return someday, full of the Holy Ghost. It's a good message I heard on Sunday. And these are just my meditations of it. Brother, it's like the tables have turned. I know how you feel now. <laughs> um, as I was preaching and ministering, and what an honor that was. 
to have you willing to go home and, and listen to the messages a couple times perhaps and then just let them work in you throughout the week. I'm receiving of that same blessing. What a blessing it is. God is so good to us. Praise the Lord. Amen.